today we're going to talk about the Panasonic S5 Mark II. It rocks some seriously impressive specs for content creators and filmmakers, but is it good enough for you? Stick around and find out. The Panasonic S5 Mark II and the Mark II X was introduced in January of 2023, taking what already worked well in their predecessor, the Panasonic S5, and adding a few new features that would make it a much more accessible camera to your average consumer. You could easily say that they took a good camera and made it great. Let's quickly talk about those features. First, it's a hybrid full frame camera that's primarily focused on video. It's got a 24 megapixel full frame sensor, 4K up to 60 frames a second in 422 10-bit color, 6K up to 30 frames a second in 17 by nine or three by two open gate aspect ratios, both 420 10-bit color and 120 frames a second at 1080p 420 10-bit color. Dual native ISO at 640 and 4000 ISO, unlimited record time, dual UHS-2 SD card slots, 5-axis stabilization rated up to 5 stops, USB-C port for charging or, in the case of S5 Mark II X, USB-C to SSD recording for ProRes RAW recording, full HDMI port with clean HDMI output, cooling fan, it also includes a 3.5mm mic jack and headphone jack. Photography wise, it could shoot up to 30 frames per second using the electronic shutter and 9 frames per second with fixed focus and 7 frames per second with continuous autofocus. Mobile connectivity with Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, plus a whole lot more and it retails for about $16.99 for the S5 II or $19.99 for the S5 II X. But the other really important features that you're really here for, I'm gonna cover those in just a second. Before we continue, I would just wanna preface this by saying that I don't currently own an S5 Mark II or an S5 Mark II X. Why? Because I currently own and operate six S5s and two S1Hs. These are more than enough in my day-to-day -day and in my podcast production setups. I don't need any more cameras. Not just yet, at least. I've been wanting to create this video for some time because I've built out some studio setups for people featuring the S5 Mark II and I absolutely love it for creators who have little to no experience but want something that's robust, versatile, and reliable. That being said, you're going to see some B-roll footage that I shot in my S5 Mark I where the image quality is practically the same. But the new features in the S5 Mark II are the reason why you would want it over anything else in its price range right now including the Mark I. So let's talk about why you want this camera. First and foremost, the image and the color science. What's always kept me coming back to Panasonic was the beautiful image and the colors that came out of Lumix. I mostly shoot in Vlog, which is a flat color profile, and in the S5 Mark II, it rocks 13 stops of dynamic range, giving you the ability to retain details in the highlights, the midtones, and the shadows. Also, shooting in 4K 422 10-bit gives you that high-resolution, robust file that holds up really well when pushing the pixels around while color correcting and color grading. Also, if you want a really good Rec. 709 image straight out of the camera, I highly recommend Cine Light D and Natural Color Profiles. They're downright perfect for easy and quick turnarounds. That dual native ISO at 640 and 4000 is incredibly important. Shooting in low light situations often forces you to have to make in-camera adjustments to expose properly, more specifically cranking your ISO. The higher the ISO, the more noise you're going to introduce and the crappier your image gets. In the S5 Mark II, you have dual native ISO at 640 and 4000 ISO, where you can get an absolutely clean image. This feature is also available in the S1, the S1R, the S1H, and the S5 Mark I. If you're not getting a properly exposed image at 640 ISO and start to crank the ISO up to 800, up to 1000, 1200, 1600, all the way up to just before 4000, you'll notice more and more noise in your image. However, when you turn the dial to 4000 ISO, you'll notice a much brighter and noise-free image. Now I often shoot at either 640 ISO or 4000 ISO and I just adjust accordingly to get the most well exposed and clean image out of camera. That usually means either running a variable ND and just adjusting that accordingly or adjusting my aperture or sometimes cranking the shutter speed and in some cases just shooting at a higher frame rate like 60 frames a second or 120 frames a second. 
Now you want to take your image and production even further. You can even get 12-bit ProRes RAW by using the Atomos Ninja V and in the S5 Mark II X, you can even get 6K ProRes RAW by using the Atomos Ninja V Plus. In-body image stabilization. Now another legendary feature of Lumix cameras is the in-body image stabilization. With five stops of five axis stabilization, what you'll notice is how stable your handheld footage is compared to cameras that don't have that. If you're rocking a 14 to 24 millimeter lens on an S5 Mark II X or an S5 Mark II, it almost feels like you can move like as if you're operating a gimbal. It's that steady. Dual UHS-2 SD card slots. I see in some cameras how you'll either get one card slot or you'll get dual card slots, but they'll be completely different card types. I never quite understood that. I saw this with the original Panasonic S1 where you had an XQD card slot and a UHS-2 SD card slot. While that may not be a big deal for some, it was for me. I'd rather have the same type of card when I'm operating a camera. Unlimited record time. This used to be a unique feature to Panasonic, and now many camera makers are jumping on this bandwagon and making it so that their cameras have unlimited record times. Now, for the longest time, most camera makers, including Canon and Sony, had a record limit of 30 minutes. It was a major reason for me to start working with Panasonic cameras to begin with. Unlike the Panasonic S5 Mark I, who has mostly unlimited record times with the exception of the 4K 422 10-bit, the S5 Mark II has all of its codecs and formats at unlimited record time. This is important because if you're recording interviews, podcasts, talking head videos, you don't want to find out that your camera stopped recording in the middle of a long session. Trust me, I've been there and that sucks. Now, in the middle of this recording, I'm using one of my Panasonic S5 Mark I's and I have it set to 4K 422 10 bit and I know that I have a record limit of 30 minutes. So I'm gonna to try to get this recording done before the time runs out. Custom user settings. If you're a versatile content creator doing a wide variety of content, you're going to need something that's easily customized to suit the way that you operate. The S5 has three custom setting dial options and practically every button can be customized to suit your needs. Now, why is this important? Imagine if you're on a paid shoot and you need to switch settings from 24 frames a second to slow-mo 120 frames a second. You'd have to go into your camera settings, navigate to frame rate and image settings, change the desired frame rate, and then adjust the shutter speed accordingly. Imagine if you have to do that frequently. You're going to slow things down or just miss shots entirely. Imagine if all you had to do was just turn the dial to your specific desired preset camera settings, it'll make your world so much easier. When it comes to IO ports, one of the nice features that came in the S5 Mark II was the inclusion of a full HDMI port. Now, why is this important? If you use a micro HDMI port, which was in the predecessor, you're more likely to damage the port or the cable if something happens, like it falls over or you just grab it the wrong way and you just bend the, the HDMI port. The full HDMI port is just much more reliable and sturdy. More importantly, like its predecessor, it runs clean HDMI out. So when you want to use an external monitor, an ATEM switcher, or just an HDMI capture card like the Elgato Camlink 4K or the Rode Streamer X, this camera is going to give a clean image out to those devices, giving you more uses for streaming and content creation. Autofocus. This is the main reason to really consider Panasonic today if you were ever on the fence before. Panasonic, if you didn't know, is known for its remarkable image quality and color science and a whole bunch of other amazing features. The only thing for the longest time that kept me from recommending Panasonic cameras to my clients and semi-beginner friends was the autofocus, or at least the lack thereof, until today. Panasonic listened to their loyal customers and said, we heard you and we've decided to deliver. And boy, did they deliver. That autofocus in the S5 Mark II rivals anything that I've seen in Sony and Canon. And in a lot of cases, you can probably see a lot of YouTube videos talking about the Panasonic S5 Mark II's autofocus compared to a Sony a7 IV or a Sony a7S III or anything else that's out there. The autofocus is absolutely reliable. Now, before you go and purchase this camera, here are a few things you need to know. That 4K 60 frames a second comes in the form of an APS-C crop factor of 1.6X. 
That means if you have a 24 millimeter lens on your Panasonic S5 Mark II, it'll crop in with the equivalent of a 38 millimeter lens. If you're using a 50 millimeter lens, that's the equivalent of an 80 millimeter lens. Now I'm used to this and all that basically means is I just have to back up a little bit so that I can get the proper framing and composition. That's no big deal. Let's talk about rolling shutter. Rolling shutter is a phenomenon where if you whip your camera back and forth, it looks wobbly, like jello-y. The only answer to this is just don't do it. Don't do it, that's it. Or get a camera with global shutter. And frankly, if you need a camera with global shutter, you probably wanna go with something bigger and better. Photography. Okay, look, it's a decent photography camera, but photography is not its strong suit. If you're getting this camera, it's because you're primarily focusing on video. You're not that concerned about photography. Some considerations. The price point of the S5 Mark II and the S5 Mark II X sit at $1,700 and $2,000 respectively for the body only. Now there are some bundles that include lenses that are great deals from Panasonic and you'll see them linked in the description section below. But all this to say, if you're really interested in these specs, you might even want to consider the Panasonic S1H, which even though it is four years old, it's still a beast and a workhorse of a camera in my opinion. And it produces even better images and video than the S5 Mark II. I love those cameras. The image that comes out of them just absolutely remarkable, very professional. They are my absolute daily workhorses. Now that camera, the Panasonic S1H, currently retails for about $2,400. And with the rumors swirling around about a successor to the S1H coming, this may drop the price of the S1H down even further. Now you can also find the S1H used for $2,000 or maybe even less in some cases. You're just not going to have the same autofocus as the S5 Mark II. Also, something to consider, if you're not really worried about autofocus and you're doing a lot of manual focusing, you might even want to just consider getting the Panasonic S5 Mark I. It's the same camera. The codex might be a little bit different. There's still that 30 minute record limit only in 422 10-bit 4K, but really, are you going to worry about that? So maybe consider getting the S5 Mark I if you don't need the autofocus and you want a break in the price. I've seen a few S5 Mark I's at under a thousand. Let's talk about who this camera is really for. It's totally for anyone who wants a solid workhorse of a hybrid camera for producing content. Whether you're a videographer who's looking for a decent B cam, a content creator who's looking for a hybrid camera, or even someone who's running a business and needs to produce content with a camera that's essentially a set it and forget it kind of studio camera, the Panasonic S5 Mark II is absolutely for you. It is not for someone who doesn't need reliable autofocus or already has the Panasonic S5 Mark I or someone who's looking for more of a photography camera. Also, it's not for someone who's not looking to invest $2,000 or more on a camera system just yet. For someone like that, you might wanna check out my other video on cameras that are under a thousand. I think it might be over here or over here. I'm not exactly sure. Now I've been mentioning the S5 II and the S5 Mark II X. Which one should you get? Now for the most part, the S5 Mark II is the best value of the two cameras and pretty much can handle everything from short documentaries, corporate videos, B cam for long form documentaries, music videos, journalism, wedding and events, and talking head videos. But if you need more serious firepower, you get the S5 Mark II X to shoot in 6K RAW with a Ninja V and that's pretty much it. So what are your thoughts? Is the Panasonic S5 Mark II the right camera for you? I wanna hear from you. Share your thoughts in the comments section below. Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Until then, I'm Kevin Lee.